Hey guys, um, just going to show how to make um, one of the bottle cap um, targets that I use. Um, I uh, recently killed one of my smaller ones that I had um, had for a while. For whatever reason, they ha they're kind of a weird tolerance to them because they've been recycled, like the plastic on them is cheap, so some caps are tougher than others. But uh, I think I've come up with a way to make them damn near indestructible. Um, Joey Dude followed... Uh, my instructions to the letter on on uh, how to make the other one and he murdered his in like 30 shots 30 dead on hits and, and he popped it so um, this one we're gonna try and make it a little bit tougher me and him kind of had an idea about uh, maybe using something a little bit stronger to fill it with so that's what we're gonna do here so you need bigger cap um, I know you guys are gonna be like okay well I like shooting one inch targets that's fine this is about 1.5 um, I get that you're gonna want to use a smaller cap and you can and actually the plastic on the smaller caps is a touch dense uh, touch denser uh, for like a standard two liter bottle or whatever or even one liters or whatever you know what I'm talking about though the bottle caps um, they uh, they have a little bit thicker plastic I use um, this because I feel a flatter pan um, will more evenly distribute the um, epoxy but we'll get to that in a second point is get your bottle cap whichever one you want to use and you're gonna melt or drill two holes at, uh, a l I, I want to say 10 and 2, but it's a little bit further apart than 10 and 2. 10 and 2 we found um, that if it was too close together, then that's where the crack would develop. So the further you space them, you don't want them, you know, right here, like 9 and 3, but just perhaps like this. So that's where we've got ours. So then you make your holes. I use orange uh, marking thread because one it matches it and two it's it's pretty damn durable it's like nylon thread I'm pretty sure um, I take I don't know it's like 30, 30 inches or so of it melt both ends so that it's nice and neat and uh, easier to work with fold it in half so you get like a 15 inch strand and then you're gonna take the loop then push that through the one hole you can see through the back we're gonna thread it through there to the other side bring yourself some slack through I find that makes it a little easier but once you get this Put through. You'll have this continuous running strand. Just even them out. It'll look like that. And this is really durable um, and it works really well. So yeah, two two strands. You can use a single strand of paracord. Like paracord, paracord is really durable stuff. I'm just showing you how I do it. And I do it this way with I have paracord around. I just do it this way because I like doing it this way. You'll need a stir stick of some kind and JB Weld. You can use any two-stage epoxy you want. <coughs> you want excuse me. Um, I use JB Weld um, steel. It's a uh, quick set. I think it's like eight minutes set or whatever. Um, but it's for like fixing um, um, notches or, or scratches or cracks or whatever in metal. And it's uh, it's damn solid. Uh, I think it's about 2,000 pounds per square inch strength, um, so it's it's more than adequate for, for pounding on with the most powerful of slingshots. You're still way, way, way below the threshold of the, of the strength of this stuff. What you're going to do is use your cap as a tray, fill it with equal parts. He's obviously, that's why you get this nice pl uh, plunger, it makes it easy. Instead of using two tubes, um, you'll get equal parts in there. So you're basically going to make yourself a nice little pool in there and stir it. You don't even have to apply it to something else. You just stir it in the lid and then let it set. Once it sets, you got something that's literally equivalent to almost a steel target, but it's got a plastic face on it and it's, um, it's all synthetic. So uh, I'm going to pour some in here, give it a stir, and then I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we've packed the lid. This shit is so gross. When you get it on your hands and stuff, it's just so goopy and it just does not come off. But Filled the cap, 
not filled filled you can fill it if you want go for it i actually i mean if you've got the money for it i <laughs> jv weld's a bit expensive and I'm, I'm always on a budget so um if you got the cash for it i would fill the lid right up i mean you're trying to make it indestructible right so i i have filled mine so um anyway see it in there just get the swizzle stick in there stirring it up making it nice keep some whoop <laughs> That's why I was going to say that. Keep a little bit of tension on the thread. There you go. And that allows you to get it all nice and even. And all really, really thoroughly mixed. So there's equal parts. Resin and hardener. All throughout that. And, in co and coat your thread that's in there, that's running between there. Get that all locked up too, because you want it to all be basically one piece inside there. It's not meant to be a spinner, spinner, um, by the traditional sense. It's just, it'll get smacked, but it, it's light enough that it just basically gets whacked and moves out of the way. On the two threads, it will spin, but it'll kind of reset, too. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so that's pretty thoroughly mixed. You'll start feeling, you know, you'll start feeling and seeing it thicken up on you as you're doing it and harden up a little bit. It sets pretty damn quick. I think it sets in about three minutes. And then it takes eight minutes, and then it's pretty solid. And then after like half an hour, you can shoot it. Let's clean that peg off in there. Like that. And uh, I'm trying to find an, an alright spot to set this down. That's what you end up with. Pull that again, pull that thread a little bit tight. What you're doing when you pull that thread tight is setting it. Like if you picture this as the the cap, and you got that thread through the two holes that you're tending to, when you pull that thread tight up against the top, it makes it run straight across from the two holes. So when you've got that epoxy all set in there solid, it basically is at the full extension of its point and that will allow it to do a spin. If you've got too much slack in your thread in there, excuse me, when it sets, it'll set with slack and it doesn't work nearly as well. I shouldn't say not nearly as well, but it doesn't work as well. So just make it taut. And because the resin is, or rather, as the uh, epoxy is setting, you can see it's already grabbing the thread. It doesn't, I've put, i pulled on it a couple of times now to, to set it in place and now it's just doing it on its own. And then you just leave that for the set period, and then off you go. And I'll give you some tips after that. And here it is finished up. Harder than a coffin nail. And uh, you can just put the uh, two ends through the insides of your catch box and tie them in a loop through something or however you want to attach it and there you go but I'll tell you what um, I'm gonna uh, pr pr be pretty abusive with this one over this week and uh, put as many shots on it as possible oh buddy I'm always trying to help put as many shots on it as possible this week and I'll do an update um, I guess uh, at the end of the week so uh, yeah, hope you guys are having a good time. Hope this was useful to you in some way. If it wasn't, sorry. As usual, peace.